Today we take on Shakhtar Donetsk. They travel to Slovenia and then we travel to the Ukraine to see if we can progress to the quarterfinals of the Europa League, a trophy we're trying to defend. So let's crack on with it. Roll the intro. Hello and welcome back to the NK Marabra Save. I am Cultured Left Foot and it's a pleasure to have you with me. As I say, we take on Shakhtar Donetsk, the mighty team from the Ukraine. Oil rich, I think is how you would describe them. They're, we had a look at their team last last year, I was going to say, last episode. They haven't got anyone that really threatens us. Goal scoring is Oleg Kozlev. He's their main goal scorer. Looks pretty good. Our strikers are better, so I'm not too fast. I think we're going to be okay in this game. If we look at the... Why is everyone back on that? Why is why is that reset? That's that is how I have it. Hide the unavailable players. If we have a look at the schedule, this is how we got on since we played Copenhagen. We won 6-1 on aggregate. We then played MK Domzale. Francisco Duran made his debut at the club and got two goals in five minutes and has put us on our way to a comfortable 3-1 win. Then we played Kersico and we won 2-0 with Duran getting another and Alex Cardos getting a goal as well. And we're up against Shakhtar today. We're going to do both legs. We're going to do like we did against Copenhagen because these games are quite early on in, in the Europa League for us. I'm expecting us to get through them. So they'll be on key highlights and uh, they'll be showing the replays. But we'll be able to get two games in one episode. Other than that, not much else to discuss. The board, the consortium before fell through. Um, they didn't have the funds to actually by the club but the Bojan Ban or whatever his name is the president is now talking to another consortium which has got an ex-professional footballer involved in it so we'll have to see what happens there and see if they can make an agreement this time round and we'll get new owners whilst he's been looking to leave he hasn't offered me a new contract they're not discussing anything about upgrade to facilities any network like affiliates or anything like that so I'm looking forward to getting some new owners because Bojan Ban has outstayed his welcome, let's put it that way. But we're looking all right. The squad is looking pretty fit, pretty healthy. Some players are lacking a bit of match fitness, but that's because they're not good enough to get in the starting lineup, so they're not playing. But we've adapted our tactics from the 4 3 3. We've now gone to this sort of formation. Um, generally, though, it's a. Uh, it's only like that because Itama plays up there. I'd prefer it to be a 4-4, well, 4-4-2 diamond. But at the moment, Itama is one of our best right wingers, uh, left wingers. So he'll be playing out there. And don't worry, this isn't the squad that we'll be using for the game. But talking of the game, let's crack on with it. Not much else to discuss. Someone did ask me in a comment, why is he called Big Mac? Now, in an earlier episode, when I bought him, um, I couldn't pronounce his name. Michael Makijevic, I think, Makijevic. Michael Mac is what he started as and then it went to Big Mac because it was a recommended recommended nickname in the chat and it's a lot easier to say than his actual name so that's why he's called Big Mac there are some other ones as well Ricardo I think has got a nickname because yeah uh, Ricardo Pendranada I couldn't pronounce that either so he's also got a nickname and I don't think there's many other nicknames hanging around I mean Lucas Gleasing was the main one and I was calling him wrong for the whole time I just didn't call him well, I was calling him Lucas, Lucas Gleasing, and that wasn't his name. In fact, is he still here? He is still here, Lucas Gleasing. There he is, yeah. I was calling him Lucas Gleasing, and his actual name is Lucas Gaiasing. Gaiasing. I don't know. Anyway, he's still here. He's not playing very much, as you can see. He's in the B team. Is he actually getting run outs for the B team? He is. He's got two goals and three assists for him. Eight to play of the matches. Oh, good on him. Good. He's having a good old time in the B team. Fair play. Fair play to him. Right, that's enough of my ramblings. Let's go and crack on and play Shakhtar Donetsk. Okay, so this is how we line up to play Shakhtar at home. We have Bacola in goal. Ills, Kovac, Ricardo and Tapia are the back four. Danks sits in front of them. Castagnoli keeps his place at right wing purely because uh, Cespedes isn't quite match fit yet after he's been out for quite a while with an injury. Hodzic and Aitama are the two attacking midfield players. Cardos and Hamsbogovic lead the line. On the bench, we have Sam Leffert, Cespedina, Sainz, Ajayzi, Pavlin, Pasquale and Big Mac. They line up in a 3-5-2 with wing-backs, which will be interesting to see their wing-backs take on our full-backs slash right-winger. As you can see in this tactic, well, you might not be able to see because my head is sort of in the way. Tapia, the left-back, has reverted back to a full-back on support, whereas Ilza still is a complete wing-back on attack. 
That's purely because I don't want Itama to defend too much. Tapia should be able to take care of that. And uh, Cascanoli, where he pushes on the wing, I want the overlap to happen. And that's where Danks, as an anchor man, which again you can't really see because my head's in the way, will filter in at the right back. And I've moved my mouse around in all of that. And then remember that you can't actually see it. So... Top work, Dave. Brilliant. So the game gets underway and we go. You can also see up here that we have no instructions. We're on standard and flexible. We're going to try and manage the games as we go. And they've actually got a, their goalkeeper and I think one of their centre-backs are already on a slight injury. Is Pitcher Doko, who is, I hope he doesn't get the ball very often because I can't say his name. Chernov shoots and it's a good save from Bacola. And I think straight away we're actually going to try and go to control fluid and control the ball. And we'll look to pass it out of defence defense and put shorter passing on. Just so that we can control the play. And yeah, it is actually Sanger, their centre-back that we want to buy off them. Or wanted to buy previously. Is carrying a slight knock. So let's just see what they've got. So oh, it doesn't say here, does it? It doesn't say. But that's a shame. Uh, the first half has absolutely flown by. And we haven't done very much. So we might have to revert back to our old tactic. And uh, go one up front and try and make some... Make some headway here. Kozlov puts a good ball through to the guy I can't pronounce. And the guy I can't pronounce has scored. Yuri Pritchard apostrophe co. K.O. Plyko de co. I don't know how you pronounce I'm not even going to attempt it. But we've conceded an away goal. Kozlov, he was left in acres of space. It was uh, Castagnoli didn't follow his man. And Pritchard de I'm not going to say it. Yuri has scored for Shakhtar Donetsk. And uh, that's a big disappointment. We are 1-0 down. At home, um, hopefully it won't turn to two. It's going to be a change of formation at halftime. I can tell you that right now. As Van der Beek picks it up into Ovchinovkov, shoots, and Pakola has just gone straight through him. And we're not even going to wait until half time. It's going to happen now. Kaskinani Danks, Hamza Bogovic uh, is probably going to have to come off because we'd rather leave Carlos on, I imagine. Hamza Bogovic is going to come off and be replaced by uh, Christian Ajazi to start. Those two can swap over. And right, well. Let's do this the hard way and get back into the Europa League. What did I say? We're not going to do these on extended because I think we'll breeze through. A Jay-Z heads down. Danks is there. We get one back instantaneously after the changes. And uh, that just goes to show that that new formation only really works in Slovenia because the teams are crap. And what is this view from the director? Jay-Z nods it down. Danks on the half volley. Absolutely belts it. And if the guy on the line had got his head in the way, it probably would have taken his head right off. But that sees us through to half time. And I'm going to tell them, where's the passion? Do you even want to win? That's the question. Do you even want to win? As uh, Shakhtar Zanets gets underway in the second half, their three at the back haven't really been tested. That was our only shot on target that we've scored from. But the ball comes in again. Castagnoli out to Hodzic. Back to Castagnoli on the edge. Shoots. Deflected in off Van der Beek. And we've had one shot on target and scored two goals. So make that make of that what you will. But this shows that I shouldn't have changed this formation anyway. So it was Hodzic to Castagnoli. Back to Hodzic. Back to Castagnoli. Who had a shot and Van der Beek has literally side footed that into the corner. He's placed it into the corner for us. It doesn't make sense. I don't know what's going on. But I'll take it. A Jay Z. Out wide to Tappy. He's got an overlap from Itama. It's there. He uses him. Byline. Ball in. Cardos. Header. Goal. Easy. Why did I consider changing formation? One up front works for us. Even though I've got three amazing strikers, one up front works for us. Itama gets in behind. Good ball across. Cardos is there. Lovely header. Okan is just flapping at it. Doesn't know what to do. Puts it in. 3-2. Much better. This is a much better performance. Sanga on the right, well, right-sided centre-back position. All the way back to Okan. Out to Medvedev. Medvedev. Oh, Let's get rid of Shakhtar the next. I can't pronounce any of their bloody player names. Ajazi, Cardos, not born him. Ajazi gets it back to Castagnoli. Overlap on, but doesn't use it. Back to Ajazi. Out to Tapia. Itama's there again, but he goes on his own. Tapia. Cardos is there. It's 4 2. What a turnaround since half time. 30th goal of the season for Alex Cardos. You can see why the big clubs want him, but we ain't selling him. And here it is then. Tapia picks it up. This doesn't use Itama. A good little ball in, deflected twice, and Cardos pounces on it. And again, the goalkeeper is absolutely terrible, and we shouldn't have conceded those two goals to start with. And this is showing our class. Our class is coming through and flourishing like some sort of wonderful butterfly. And I'm not too sure where I'm going with this metaphor, but that's what we're going with. Sam Leffert's going to come on for Itama, and Hodzic is going to be replaced by Ivan Sains. And that will be our substitutions for the day. We can sit back and relax. In, in what is a good win. They've even subbed their goalkeeper off. So the injury was obviously too much. Or the fact that he's conceded four goals from three shots on target could be another issue. But we're ticking down into the last ten minutes. 
And there doesn't appear to be too much going on. Chelsea have come from 2-1 down to be 3-2 up away from home. So it looks like they're probably going to go through. Uh, Jay-Z is picking up a yellow card. Yes, he is. Hopefully he won't get another one. As Shakhtar looked to take this free kick. Goes to Kuzmin. I can pronounce that name. Of Chinivkov. He's already got one for him today. Ricardo's fouled him. He's probably going to get a yellow card as well. Uh, Newcastle 3 0 up against Olympic Lyonnais. Anyone? Any big teams losing? Tottenham are beating Ajax 2 0. The Gamadas are beating Wolfsburg 2 0. So, and they've scored. Well, it's 4 3. So, it's um, an interesting second leg is going to be coming up. And Brayota ping that in. What a free kick that is from, what, 30 yards ish? Maybe? A bit more? A bit less? I've, well, I've not given you an answer, have I? I've said 30 and then a little bit more, a little bit less. Doesn't help anyone. Ivan Sainz has twisted his ankle. And ref, please blow up your whistle because I don't want to concede another. There we go. It is 4-3. And the two teams from the old Eastern Bloc have played out an absolutely fascinating game. I'm going to tell them I'm very pleased with the comeback. But we need to play better in the second leg. That is for sure. So I'll do that press conference behind the scenes. Uh, Carlos was once again superb in front of goal. And Ruska was looking for his next turkey squad. That was their goalkeeper who was injured. He was playing with a broken finger. No wonder he conceded four goals. But yes, we'll well, we'll go from there. I'll do this press conference behind the scenes. I've got a game to play against Rula Valenje. And then we'll be back for the second leg against Shakhtar Donetsk. And I will see you right there. And we're back for the second leg against Shakhtar Donetsk. And... We've got some squad issues. Suspensions have hit us quite hard for this game. So, as you'll see, if we just clear this selection here, we'll go into the unavailable list. Ricardo is suspended. Hasby is injured. Tapia suspended. Ajayze injured. And obviously, we couldn't register a Francisco. Oh, excuse me, Francisco Duran. But that leaves us with quite a minuscule squad for this game. So it'll be interesting to see what our starting starting lineup is. What I do know is we'll be using this formation because Shakhtar couldn't handle it in the first leg when we changed to that. So that is what we will be changing to. If we look at the schedule, the game in between, we got a very comfortable 2-0 win. And we scored a penalty. Can you believe it? Alex Cardos actually put a nice tucked away penalty into the top left corner. It was very good. 2-0 up inside 13 minutes. And then we took it pretty comfortably. Picked up a few yellow cards. But generally, it was a very good performance. And Francisco Duran scored whilst playing on the right wing. So it does give us another option out there as well. But today, we take on Shakhtar Donetsk. And I'll see you at the team sheet. Thing day. That's not what I normally say. See you at the game day. That's what I say. See you there. So, as I mentioned, we use the 4 2 3 1 formation. This is how we line up Bacola in goal, Ilz, Kovac, Pavlin, and Pascal make up the back four. A few changes there Pavlin and Pascal come in, Tapia and Hasby are both out, and Ricardo as well. Lopez and Sane sit in the middle there. Cespedes starts on the right, Hodzic is behind Cardos, and Itama on the left. They have their one of their goal scorers missing from the first game, but they've changed to a 4-1-2-2-1. It looks like they're going to be going for it in this game. So hopefully we can hit them on the counter-attack and get a few goals. So the team talk's gone well, green all across the board, and we're setting up for this to be a very exciting second leg. Our fans were pessimistic, apparently, before the game, even though we're taking a 4-3 lead in with us. I guess the three away goals that Shakhtar have got do sort of put it in their favour. They only need a 1-0 win and they go through. But I'm I'm confident that with this formation and the team we've got out, we should be fine. What I like about our team at the moment is that even when we have these suspensions and these injuries, we have such a strong squad now rather than just a strong 11 players. It is good. I mean, the fans and some of the players are still moaning that we don't have enough strength and depth. But I think that's because it goes on the... Like the attribute rate, not the attribute ratings, the ability ratings and the star ratings. So quite a lot of our centre backs are only two and a half, three star, and I think they want to see more like three and a half, four star players. But generally, I'm happy with the squad. Um, I think we will be looking as we go in. It was into Hodzic. It said, "Since but it's oh, Ocan makes the save." Uh, that was very terrible commentary as well. I think many people have said we need a new goalkeeper, and I think I'll be looking for a young goalkeeper who is going to be that four, four and a half star bracket that will probably spend quite a lot of money on. And we're also going to be looking for a new centre-back. But I've got a few lined up that are like squad players coming in, um, at end of contract stuff. But we'll see what our budgets will be like for next year. And I think we'll go splurging on a goalkeeper if we can. But we're into half-time, nil-nil. And um, we are still ahead on aggregate. So assertively, we'll say we've got the aggregate lead. Don't let it slip. 
and uh, we'll just say, you know, the old I've got a faith, there's a lot more to come from them. They seem to like that assertively as well. Good look to bring on Hamsbergovic or even Sam Leftfoot on the left wing. Itama isn't really having a good game at the moment. I wonder if there's anything we can mix up here. I mean, all of our strength is down the middle at the moment, so let's try and exploit the middle for a little bit. As we get the second half underway, this has been unbelievably uneventful compared to the first game where there were seven goals, obviously, after 90 minutes. And this, to be fair, suits us pretty fine. And the time is absolutely bombing past us. We've only got 20 minutes left in this game. I am going to do Itama for Sam Leftfoot just because he's not having a brilliant game. And I'm, I am tempted to drop these two back here. We can take Pascal off. We don't need to push for it anymore. Let's get these guys on fullbacks on support so they can push up. And we'll even drop Cespedes back as well. Go for a bit more of a flat 4-4-1-1. Uh, even Sainz, I could get a bit more of a defensive-minded player on like Ellis Banks. I think I'm going to do that. And uh, we'll swap ooh, these two over. Danks can go as a ball-winning midfielder on to defend. Let's just leave him sitting back there. Nothing to worry about. Three subs done. Hopefully that won't mess things up too much. Now we've got those wingers on as well. We don't need to exploit in the middle as much as we were. Sam Leffert comes on and picks up an injury, a, a shin injury, which is good for nobody. We're into the last few minutes, so we'll retain the possession. And... That could be the game as Hodgson puts the ball in. Kovac tries to get there. It's cleared. It's full time. Nil nil. We'll take that. It puts us through with a 4 3 aggregate win. And uh, yeah, good. Nice. We're into the next round. That game was unbelievably quick. Unbelievably short. So we qualify from the second knockout round in the Europa League. Sam Leffert is now injured for three to six days. We get more money. And uh, he was there looking at Jacko Pavlin for his next Slovenia squad. I'm not too sure how he doesn't get in the Slovenia squad. He must do anyway. Uh, do we have the draw? The draw for the quarterfinals is tomorrow, so we'll go through to that. We didn't have a look to see who goes through, so that'll be a bit of a surprise. The only name I did see that went through was Chelsea, so we'll have to have a look and see who we've got. Not much going on here, apart from Sainz being banned for the next game, which could be a bit of a concern, but I don't know. Um, yes, he is, absolutely. I don't know why he hasn't been called up yet so far. Bacola is absolutely amazing, and Pellegrino is aware of his form, so there we go. Excellent. And here we go. Eight teams into the quarterfinals. Chelsea, Newcastle, Roma, Tottenham, Fenerbahce, us, Rene and Wolfsburg. Basically, we want one of these sides, I'd say. I sort of want to avoid them. If Chelsea could play Newcastle and one of them knock, it, knock the other one out and Roma play Tottenham, that would be wonderful. I want Fenerbahce, Stadene or Wolfsburg, which means I'm more than likely going to get Chelsea. Here we go. There we go. Automatic draw is happening. Here they come. First one out of the bag. Yeah, Stadene. We'll have them. Yes, we've got Stad Rene. There we go. Quality stuff. Who I wanted. Fenerbahce getting Chelsea. So Chelsea will probably go through from that. Wolfsburg are going to get Newcastle. I'd expect Newcastle to win that game. And Roma will be playing Tottenham. That's a tough one to call. But it looks like I'm confident we should get to the semi-finals. If we have a quick look at Stad Rene, their key player is Federico Rizzone, who does look pretty good. Centre-back, world-class centre-back, not looking too bad at all. We'll give him a scout and see if we can... Maybe pick him up because that is a position we're looking at. Vice captain Pierre Silla again looks pretty decent. 31 year old Ivorian, not too much to write home about. And Malcolm, someone who's randomly not many players left in my game that have got a proper picture. And here he is 150k, 34 year old Brazilian. Probably not going to cause us too much damage because of his lack of pace. But that is who we'll be playing. If we look at the senior squad, who's scoring their goals? is Charles Mulek is scoring their goals. He looks very handy indeed. How is he not their key player? Anyway, there we go. So we're going to be playing Stade Vene in the next round, and that is what we're going to come back for in the next episode. So I'll see you there. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Let me know what you think of the signings and where we should be strengthening for next season, and can we retain the Europa League? I really hope you're enjoying this series. I'm, I'm still loving it. It's going really, really well. And I thank you all very much for your support. So I'll chat to you all soon and we'll be back to play Stad Donay. I'm out. Cheers.